another session of static structural today we will see a problem which i am going to solve using a coarse mesh and then by using some advanced meshing system we will see the difference in both the problems i'll start with static structural i label it as static structural 1 i'll go to geometry right click new design model geometry units millimeter xy plane sketching i'll draw a rectangle give it some dimensions i will extrude geometry is applied say the depth is 40 generate now on this plane or say on this face i'll first create a new plane so i will click on face new plane generate you can see that my axis has shifted from this point to this corner which means that this plane has now got selected i will go to look at sketching i'll draw a circle i'll give it some dimensions say 20 and the distance of the center from this end is say 20 So this is how it looks like. I'll again go to extrude. The geometry automatically gets selected. Apply the geometry. Instead of add material, I'll select cut material. And for the entire depth, I'm going to extrude. So this is a rectangle with a hole into it. Next, I'll go to model. I'll go to mesh sizing. It is coarse mesh selected here. I'll update. I'll now go to static structural. Say one face. I'm going to fix, insert, fix support, and on the other face, I will apply. a load you can see this body is aligned along the x axis so i'll apply the load in x direction say of 50000 newton or 50 kN then i'll go to solution right click insert deformation directional it will be along x axis right click insert stress von mises right click insert strain von mises i'll go to solution solve now i'll go to directional deformation and i can see the deformation over here i'll click on probe max min so i can see the minimum value here and the maximum value here so this is how i get my values by using a coarse mesh now i'll first create the fine mesh pattern and then we'll get back to seeing the results and we'll try to compare what happens if i use a coarse mesh and what happens if i use a fine mesh and with some advanced meshing options now I am going to use the same geometry for the next analysis. So what I am going to do is I am going to make use of multi-physics feature of ANSYS, which means 
you can solve a particular problem and transfer some amount of data you have fed into the first one into your second feature for that what i do is i will left click on static structural drag it outside and i want only tell geometry so i will just slide over and i will come up to geometry only i will label it as static structural now i'll go to model i'll go to mesh sizing i'll change cores to fine mesh and update now if you want you may add tetrahedrons over here from mesh control method geometry apply method tetrahedrons update if i want to add inflation over here inflate this method i want to select the boundary which is here apply if i want to add more number of layers say 7 update this green thunder it means it is in progress i'll go to mesh i can see over here there are some extra layers for calculation so that i can get better results over here you can also alternately apply over here by inflate this method inflation 2 i'll select this boundary apply layers 7 again update a hole in a object is always going to be an area where there will be a lot of notch sensitivity by which i mean the possibility of cracks developing will be more here after any operation so for analysis it is always preferred to have more of inflation which means having more layers and more nodes and elements so that the analysis gives you more precise results i'll do the same analysis here static structural this face insert fix support okay first align the body fix support i'll just change the face the face is here apply on this face i'll apply force it's along the x axis again you should make sure that both the geometries are aligned in the same manner and they have the same axis along which the force is applied otherwise the results will be wrong so i'm applying the same load here 50000 newton i'll go to solution right click insert deformation directional it's x direction right click insert strain right click insert stress go to solution solve now we'll check the two solutions you can read here it is written static structural one for directional deformation we can see that one end has a value 0 and on the other end the value is 2.0512 into 10 to the minus 5 when i talk about static structural two which is again mentioned here the value is 2.0522 into 10 to the minus 5 so the value variation is very less from 1 to 2 but this value is accurate and this value will be more precise and rest of the values are going to be approximately the same 2.2 4.5 6.8 approximately the same values
Minimum stress is 3.735 into 10 raised to 6. And for static structural 1, the stress value is different. The maximum stress is 3.3482. And here the value is 1.3168. So there will be a little difference in the values here. Let's go to strain. Again, the maximum strain value is 0 0.00065841. Here it is close by and minimum is 5.2 into 10 raised to minus 5 and it is 2.3931. As you can see everywhere because of my better meshing, I can I am getting different results here. I am going towards more precise answers and when I choose coarse mesh, my answers are accurate they are not precise so if you want precise results it is always better to go for advanced meshing system like i have taken up here and if i click on probe max min my values will be selected i can see over here my maximum stress strain is marked over here maximum stress has been shown and its value has been marked very correctly when i come here my stress value is again marked and so is my strain values. Using inflation option, your results are bound to be more precise as compared to static structural 1. So with this, I conclude this numerical. I hope you have understood meshing in more depth with the help of this problem. Like and share my videos. Hit the bell icon for more updates. I'll see you in the next session with another problem of static structural. Thank you.